Hey guys, Julian here today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this crazy, chaotic, Sophie style music. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, literally everything that you just heard in the intro is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that. Also, if you're looking for lessons or ghost production or track finishing, I've got all that at the top of the description as well. Definitely go click those links. Support me, but also it really helps support you guys. You know, all of these services and sample packs are super affordable, but it's all really high quality stuff, so you can take your tracks to the next level today. So go support yourself, grab something in the description. Thank you so much for the support, guys, and let's dive in. All right, so we are at 114 BPM. It's like this slow halftime groove. And it starts with the drums. Now, if you actually look at it, it's really just tr two drums, right? A kick and a snare. You can obviously hear there's a lot happening between these elements. So, to start with, it's the kick up here. So we start off with the actual kick. You know, it's just this nice punchy short kick. I had to tune it. And then we have the bass. So this bass is made of three layers. We've got a sub, which is like a very basic, just a square wave inside of operator, low pass filter to dial it back so you get just the really fat low end without all the like mids and highs. And then we have a pitch envelope. And then I just tuned it to be in the same key as the 808 and all of that. So actually very simple, but that's really if you listen to it. Like when you hear it on its own and then you hear the whole mix, you hear just how much of it is the sub. If you take that out, it's like a lot less stuff there. So then we have this 808. So what this is, is an 808 kick, like literally that, that's the original sample, right? This super dry, just clean 808 out of an 808 drum machine, exactly how you would get it. And then what's happening is I pitched it a little bit and there's also a low pass filter with a little bit of an envelope, kind of just makes it go like kind of go down at the end there. Then we have a little bit of chorus with a very high feedback and the amount all the way up. You can hear that just kind of makes it warble a little bit. We've got the saturator here's without it. And with it, it just gives us more crunch. Amp, here's without that. And then with it. So you can hear that really does a lot, right? And it's working together with the saturator to take this like crazy warped distortion you get out of the saturator and just crunch it up and then we have a high pass to make sure it doesn't get in the way of the sub and then the last layer for the bass is this which has actually got similar processing you can see it's the same amp and saturator it's just high passed a lot more but what this is is it's that same 808 and then actually a little bit of noise and what happens you can see the noise is being band passed what happens is when you put the 808 and the noise together into this distortion, you get that like really crunchy. So you see why we add that and then you just high pass it so it's just that. And then the only thing we have on the group is just a compressor which side chains it. It's not being side chained to the kick. I have this muted side chain layer which is just like a little tiny click so that it's a nice sharp transient on the side chain. And then we also have a high pass cutting out some of the bass that you wouldn't really hear, but it makes the whole groove a lot stronger. So that's the kick and the bass. Then we have the snare. And this thing is 100% synthesized. So to get the metallic snare, I think something people don't talk about enough is that you have to have a solid foundation underneath it. Like, we have some metal sounds here. And I'll show you how to make those for sure. But that's not really going to work unless you have 
like that solid snare underneath it for it to kind of like work on it. Because what's happening is it's basically the metallic sound is moving. <laughs> right? It's like doing all this crazy stuff. And then you need sort of like a foundation that that sits on. Right? So, for the foundation, it's made by synthesizing three layers, and then there's also a little 808 clap. So, we have this guy, which is like basically this. So, it's this FM sound with some sine waves, a little pinch envelope. I've got actually a little bit of corpus and some drum bus, and then it's being high passed. And we're actually taking just the lows. That's actually the sound. It sounds crazy when you hear it. But when you take just the lows, See, it gives you that, like, kind of snare head sound, right? Which is, like, very important for the actual snare. Then we have this, which is just a punch. It's just, you can see this sine wave, a bit of FM from another sine wave, and then a pinch envelope. High pass, and then it's drum bust, and then that just gives us, like, the... Dum. Like, you put those together, and you have the body of the snare. And then we have... A little bit of noise actually, you can hear some, some white noise, and then a high pass filter. And that's it, but since it's, it's going through some group processing as well, but when you put that with those last two layers, here's without this, and then with it. See that gives you the like, snare. And then the last thing to kind of glue it all together in terms of layers that it needed, is it's got this 808 clap. So that's dry. You can say I pitch it down a little bit. Again, there is stuff on the group that this is all going through. But that just fills in that last, like, little bit. Again, without it. With it. Right, so now we just have this big, full snare. I've got on the group a bit of overdrive. It's all the way up, but it's being, it's only at 23%. And I've got this drum bus, which is also being blended. So here's no effects. There we go. So that's the actual main snare. Then we have these metallic sounds. And what you do is you layer these together over top of that main snare. So for the first one, you can see it's... The main thing about this is it's pinching around. It's not ever just playing the same note like two times in a row. And that's part of what makes it feel so alive. And you don't have to do a whole bunch of automation for that. It's just changing the note, right? Or having like... You know, that little thing. So, this one's made with operator. We've got two sine waves creating the sound. This one is a little bit, yeah, I did like that. I've also got a little bit of FM from this one as well. You can see that's detuned a bit with the fine tune there. That really helps get that, like, you know, inharmonic sort of sound. If we put them perfectly in tune. So, yeah. Then we've got a bit of a pitch envelope. And that's really it for inside of the synth. But it's these two effects afterwards, and then how we're distorting it that gives it the metallic sound. So, I'll turn these off. See what I mean? That's how you can really get that big, like, wide sort of metallic thing. So, it's just a chorus with a really high feedback. And then the other secret to this is the delay. With a really fast time, a lot of feedback. Because see how it just gives you that, like really juicy metallic sort of sound and then also the distortion here's without either of these i mean without that you know that really helps to kind of bring it out and then for this one this one's staying the same and that works together too because when you get these at different pitches it just makes it feel even more like rough and kind of all over the place so this one's made with Operator as well. Operator's really the best for this stuff. I don't know if this is exactly how Sophie did it. Chances are she probably used different synths and stuff. But in terms of like... One, I don't think you need it to be exactly the same to get similar sounds. And two, like, for what's built into Ableton, Operator will just get you so far. Because that pitch envelope and the way you can work with the envelopes and the FM so quickly 
It's really good. But for this sound, it's just three sine waves here. You can see, you know, just the different octaves. Putting this up really, really high can help. I've got a little bit of a pinch envelope, some overdrive, and then it's just being high pass. And yeah, so that's the whole snare. Then the last drums we have are these little things, which just kind of add some groove. You can hear those in the whole mix. So what these are, these little operator sounds, what they are kind of based on, they're actually based on the same patch. So what it is, is it's a bit of FM from some sine waves. You can see this one's pretty punchy, but it's got a little bit of attack on the second oscillator, so you kind of get like a There's a pitch envelope. And then really it's just using like this phaser with a high feedback, the grain delay. That's how you get that like kind of texture. Like here's dry. So yeah, and then we've got a bit of drum bus, high pass, and it's being side chained. And then this one's really similar. It's just dialed in slightly different. Again, just little background drums that can really fill in that groove nicely. Then we have the vocals. So what's happening is it's basically these two tracks of vocals. We have this one, which I'll turn off the group processing really quick as well so you can just hear what it's actually doing on its own. So this is the first one. It's just literally these vocals. Take me in your own. And then I put a vocoder with the noise carrier. And then turn up the format. This is really important because it'll give you that like crispy high end that you want, right? And then what's happening is that's switching between these two vocals. And then down here, I have this vocoded vocal, which is just the same one every time. So you kind of get that like... Like some cool warped sounds this way. And all that this one is, is it's actually that same vocal sample you heard. Take me in. What's happening is this is going through a vocoder. I turn the foreman up on this one as well. And then it's this external carrier, which is this wavetable patch. Kind of a nice patch, right? So this is ring mod oscillator. And then I'm automating the position and then there's an LFO on the oscillator one position as well as the filter or on the warp as well as on the filter frequency and then that's muted obviously but there we go and then we're putting these through a bit of delay which is doing that same fast metallic delay and then a high pass filter Then we have these two sounds. And you can see how these are working together to kind of create this one groove of these like chaotic high end sounds over top of everything. And that's why I'm showing them together. Even though they're made with different methods, it's like putting different things together with similar textures to just create this big, crazy, like rhythmic. And then that's happening while all this other crazy stuff is happening with like the metal snare and the vocals and stuff. And that's how you get the sound. So this first sound is really simple. We're actually just going on G sharp. It's just that one note G sharp across different octaves to create the sound, right? It's really more happening in the synth. We have a square wave and then another square wave an octave up. A little bit of a low pass filter. Amp envelopes like that with a little attack so you kind of get a delay. Like it goes into the sound. Then we have a ton of vibrato, a bunch of unison, and this glide as well, which when you're jumping across octaves, if I turn that off, that'll give you that kind of thing if you turn it up right. And the goal with this is to try to get the synth away from like, you know, just, oh, that's C, F, and G, you know, like just taking this and using the different parameters of the synth to kind of go beyond just like, you know, very basic musicality. <laughs> then we have this grain delay, so here's without it. 
<laughs> so you can hear what it sounds like. And then with it. And really what it is is turning up turning the time down so it's really fast and turning like that spray up. We got a bit of overdrive, high pass filter, and then just a bit of delay with that same fast metallic thing. And then for this vocal, it's really similar. It's just a bit of this crazy vocal. What's happening? It's got grain delay. Chorus with a high feedback. Overdrive. The shifter, which has this random LFO on it, so the pitch is like. You can hear the pitch moving around like that. And then a high pass filter. And again, it's about the groove that these two create, like. There, where like it cuts out and makes a little bit of room for it. And all that. So that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything from this video is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that. It helps support me, but it's really about supporting yourself. You know, you can get a really, really high quality template at a very accessible price that will take your tracks to the next level today. I promise, if you grab this, you will be able to make this style and it will really make a lot more sense to you. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you for the support everybody and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.